AI is everywhere. And there's a dot, dot, dot. Welcome to AI Factor, coming to you from the NASDAQ market site. Today we're joined by Bill Briggs, Deloitte's Chief Technology Officer, to talk about the trends in tech and how AI is transforming businesses. Great to have you here, Bill. Great to be here. Tell me a little bit about Deloitte's Tech Trends report. The amount of change happening in technology is amazing. And I love in Tech Trends, we cover all of it. The things that might feel more traditional and the things that are more emerging. But the point really is when we're with our clients, how do I even understand the what of all the things happening to get to the so what of what it means to my business or my mission, to get to the now what? And then we try to put some context to, okay, the future is more predictable than it might feel. And there's enough that we have confidence to say there's investment you can and should make now, not for technology's sake, but for real value impact. And then trying to put some sense of urgency Right. So how do you instill that urgency on these big technology investments because the market isn't waiting? How have you seen AI transform businesses so far? For this year's Tech Trends report, we put the emphasis on AI is everywhere. And there's a dot, dot, dot to say, and it's being embedded into other really important advances and developments that you also have to consider. P.S. A lot of those advances are also being driven by AI. So it's a really exciting time. When we yeah. talk about companies embedding AI, what do you see as the most successful companies doing to make it work for them? Yeah, one, one bit is to say we need to invest so we have the backbone to harness and unleash AI over time. So there's a great example in the report about Google and all the investment they're doing in their own engineering teams. So of course they're investing in some of the tools that our clients are using, but they're also using it to drive really important efficiency gains within their own engineering shop. Mm -hmm. So the idea, how do we treat that as a discipline? We know we need more. We need. We know that technology is only going to continue to advance. So how do we make that a, a muscle that we grow, you know, while being really creative about all the ways that AI can be embedded in our business? One of the things the report talks about is sort of balancing these new technologies, these emerging technologies with the mature technologies. Can you talk a little bit about why that balance is important and what that looks like in yeah. practice? If we'd like to put it under this umbrella of core modernization, which doesn't quicken your pulse maybe. You know, here, here we are in AI factor. <laughs> but the reality is like you said, so much investment over the years are in the existing infrastructure applications, all the things that run business and government today. And it's not going away. Mm -hmm. The beauty is, can we embed AI into some of those core processes? So we have Graybar, a global distributor in the report, and how they've taken, not just, uh, hey, how do we think about surrounding our existing ERP and try to squeeze more life out of it? That's the old way to do it. They're saying, how do we embed AI in how our people write quotes for their customers? Or how do we embed AI into the customer service routine? And so this line between the core being the back office and system of record, which has been the historical, like we're seeing it blend the line to say they could be systems of innovation, mm -hmm. but we got to treat them different than we have in the past. Another thing that you mentioned in the report is spatial computing and yeah. how that's being accelerated by AI. Can you tell me a little bit about what that is, how it's being implemented and what its future is? Sure. The net of it is how do we take the real world and the digital world and bring them together? And when we do it, not enough organizations have the actual digital assets mm -hmm. and contents, you know, and it has to be really precise because we're talking about simulating uh, operations in a hospital floor. We're talking about modeling new construction for an energy company. That can't be kind of right. It has to be exactly right. right. And then how do you have that bring to life in new ways that people can experience it? So typically folks think immediately to augmented reality and virtual reality, which is important as a piece of this. Um, but it could be as simple as we want to bring a, a real life model of our operations, bring it to life on a tablet or a you know, not very exciting screen, but layer in AI to bring new insights on how we can do it better. Another piece here mentioned in the report is that smaller purpose built models are kind of rising yeah. up as competition against these larger generalized models that are out there. How are companies deciding what's best for them and when to go with the smaller model? Yeah, they're, they're working in concert because you need both. Mm. But the idea that it's all, I think for the last year, LLM is gonna dominate most of the airways. So small language models, really important. And it comes back to lead with need. Like how do we think about the types of decisions that need to be made in the moment? You know, on the actual truck for fleet management, 
or in that hospital room mm -hmm. guiding a decision. And there's a complementary trend called Hardware is Eating the World, which is a play off of Mark Andreessen years ago wrote a report about software is eating the world. Mm -hmm. And for a long time, hardware was something we didn't even think about as a strategic decision. It was something that was just a necessary, kind of got relegated to commodity. And we've got great uh, interviews from a number of the hardware manufacturers, uh, Dell and HP in particular, saying, hey, we're investing in edge AI chipsets. So you can have it in your laptop, you can have it in your phone, you can have it in the sensors on the, on the factory floor. The question is, what do we do with it? And then uh, make the right investments behind it. One of the biggest things that we talk about when we talk about AI is its impact on the workforce. Yeah. How do you see that transforming employee bases, the skills that they bring, the skills that they need to bring to a workplace? Yeah, and Deloitte's in the midst of our own multi-billion dollar investment in AI and how we work. So one, we know we need more access to talent. So there's a lot of investment. We're seeing AI academies and broader tech academies. How do we up our capability of our people? Mm -hmm. uh, and then it's this idea of, can we give the tools to make a lot of the work that people didn't want to do anyway go away. We have our engineering platform and our AA Jumpstart investment we've made. It's not the things that people wanted. I'm a developer, I'm an engineer. It's about how do I get environments ready? It's about doing the unit tests that, that have to happen, mm -hmm. but it's not exactly what gets engineers out of bed in the morning. Those are the things that we've seen massive efficiency gains on. Mm -hmm. And we've done that for our clients too. And it leaves the engineer to think at higher levels. Agentic is another big topic, yes. right? And so how do we think about very uh, discrete tasks that we don't have to have the rules laid out ahead of time and how people are gonna work and navigate. And it's powerful and we're excited about it. Apply that into the engineering life cycle. Right now it's, can I get code assist? Can I do some of those tasks? We might see soon a, a model where you actually have a co-developer with you that's an AI agent that's not just answering your very tactical requests, but helping you think through creative ways to solve the problem and have this human in the loop, but partnering in a different way. Yeah, and outside of engineering too, do you see it as kind of an upskilling for uh, maybe analysts or other workers that used to not have to know tech who might now have to? Yeah, increasingly everyone needs to be aware enough, you know, one, to just help shape the ambition of what we should do with AI that we're not doing today. And that's everyone, from your new campus hire, working the, the ground floor, to the C-suite. What's the biggest takeaway from this year's Tech Trends report? I love that quantum is mm -hmm. getting a more concrete moment in the sun. Yeah. We've been talking about quantum computing for a while and we're really excited about the potential over time. It's not gonna replace cloud and traditional computing. But the thing that's in front of us is post-quantum cryptography is coming. It's, it turns out that the things that are the underpinning of modern encryption is one of the example problems that quantum computing will be very well suited to help solve. Okay. But the issue is we have to make the investments. And, and we talk in the report at JPMC is one of the companies actively investing now because they know it's coming. How do you see AI making businesses more agile and sort of being able to beef up what they can offer in the years to come? Yeah, it's AI while it's everywhere. It's still the headline of a lot of conversations. And in the not too distant future, it's going to be embedded in how we think about every business process, finance and in, in our portfolio, how we invest in our customer service routine and the products we deliver. So I'll be at CES. There won't be a lot of vendors touting that now we have electricity baked into our right. you know, wares. <laughs> AI is going to follow that path, which is not undermining the importance of AI. It will continue to advance, but it's going to become more of a feature and it will be embedded in how do we think about our product launch uh, and the things we can offer that we couldn't before, or, or how we think about our supply chain globally and managing that mm -hmm. in a way we couldn't. Uh, so it, it, in a way, it'll become more important and less of a headline, which I think is a great bit of progress, right. actually. Great. Thank you so much, Bill. All right. Thank you. Thanks for watching. I'm Rocio Fabro for Quartz. Stick with QZ.com for more.